What's going on, everybody? This is Take Control Radio, your one-stop shop podcast for fitness, nutrition, and wellness information. My name is Evan. I'm a trainer and nutrition coach. I'm here with Dr. Joe. Yeah, this is Dr. Joe, co-host. I'm a obstetrician at night and a health and wellness coach during the day. So yeah, we kind of uh, decided to make a little podcast episode on a little rant we were doing a couple minutes ago. And uh, sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't agree. And the topic today is if nature made it, eat it. If man made it, don't. And it actually uh, was a concept that started last night. Can you kind of yeah. elaborate? I was watching television last night and watching PBS and Dr. Mark Hyman was plugging his new book, Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? And during the course of his presentation, he said something like that, if nature made it, eat it. If man made it, don't. And as a just as a guideline for getting started on eating healthier. Yeah, and we always kind of battle. I'm a big believer in moderation. Sometimes, you know, as we'll get move forward with this podcast, we'll talk about when moderation can make sense and when moderation might not make sense. And uh, actually, today we're t- kind of teaching you how to post our first uh, podcast on your Facebook page, and um, that's kind of where it all started. And talk about why potentially you, you meant that quote or why uh, more common you know, is a firm believer in that, in that quote, and then what we change it to, and why we change it to that. Well, when I was listening to it, I thought he was going to give a pure, whole food, plant-based kind of roadmap. Mm-hmm. And he surprised me that it really wasn't just whole food, plant-based. So he's not advocating just that. He's advocating being careful, being aware of some of the things out there that are okay to eat, but you just have to be careful about quality. Quality doesn't matter. I and mean, he kept saying quality was important. And so we changed that if man made it, don't eat it, to if man made it, beware. And a couple things to be, be aware of is vegetables sprayed with herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers, and animals being fed antibiotics and steroids, and then eating that in the grocery store may not be good choices even though they may sound better than eating fast food or eating a restaurant. Right, and then obviously, you know, foods that come out of a box, that kind of thing, and uh, processed type meats. And obviously, the goal, a lot of times for me and my clients, is to teach them to be aware, and then teach them to learn how to do, have moderation. So, I'm, I'm a big believer on educating people on eat what we know is right for the majority of the time. Um, but it's just t- tough to completely keep them away of certain foods. And so if I can educate somebody to, you know, for the most part, eat at home, eat lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, and every once in a while we can have the the fun foods that we enjoy, whether it's going to Chick-fil-A or, you know, being able to go out and eat, you know, with your friends and have a beer or two, that's understandable. And um, that's a lot of the clients that we see, you know, a lot of people that are just trying to lose 15, you know, 20 pounds, um, but sometimes there's clients that need to lose a lot more and might not be considering moderation. So if you can kind of maybe talk about that real quick. You know, we're all individually different. And you, I'm sure you've seen people that are close to their ideal body weight, they're skinny, and they may not, may not even exercise a whole lot. And uh, they're still thin and look healthy, but they eat pizza and they eat some fast food. and. So how do they get away with it? Do they just have a huge, a very high metabolism? They just burn it up, they're just lucky? But I've known that are people that are middle-aged that are like that and still are thin and they eat pretty much everything across the board. So they somehow eat in moderation. They eat everything, they just don't eat a lot of it. Right. And they don't worship food like some people do. We all love food. I mean, we all love food. We certainly love certain cuisines. I think the moderation part um, from the person's standpoint, is an important way to control your well. They've got your good at, and yeah, your weight. They've gotten good at listening to their hunger signals. That you know, um, eating food is necessarily. I mean, they're just there to eat. It's not like a a pleasure signal. Signal. It's not necessarily fun for them. Where that might be what makes their day for a lot of people. These more overweight types of people. And you're right. They've learned how to have a meal and it's something that I struggle with on a daily basis you know just to be completely honest I'm I, I try to be a nutrition coach that can relate to people we had pizza on Friday I had 10 pieces of pizza 
that's a little a little unreal. But I found a way. That is not a moderation, but I found a way to kind of get away with that with habits and you know other aspects of my of my week and exercise that kind of thing. But and that doesn't also that doesn't necessarily mean that they're healthy. So you know eating those foods and um, now granted they're in a, in a healthy weight, but they might not exercise and. You know, you hear a lot of times these people that they, they look healthy, they seem healthy, but then something might happen to them health-wise. Yeah. So if you have someone that's 20 pounds overweight versus 50 pounds overweight versus 100 pounds overweight, they probably have different problems. Right. They probably have a, a different food addiction mm -hmm. that is worse. The more you weigh, the more of a food addiction problem you have. And so I think the moderation message probably doesn't work that well for the one that is very, very overweight versus the one that's just a little overweight. So everybody's individualized. And that's kind of what we, what we try to teach people is there's not one way to do things. We have to find what works for you, whether that's a diet or finding ways to moderate these certain foods that we enjoy or uh, whether it's, you know, we talk about a lot about uh, fruits and vegetables within the uh, grocery store. Maybe you can kind of talk about that real quick. Kind of things that we should, you know, obviously look out for, you know, if we can spend a little bit of extra money on the, the better the better foods for us and, again, moderate some of the foods that might be, you know, you're going to talk about uh, sprayed potentially a little bit more than... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure most people have heard the saying, when you go to the grocery store, you should shop around the periphery and should avoid the center of the store. The really good stuff's around the periphery and the bad stuff's in the middle. All the processed stuff, the cereals, is good all the stuff that has labels on it. But there are exceptions to that rule. In the center of the grocery store, there are frozen vegetables, and they're pretty good. And on the periphery, there are some uh, processed things, some processed meats and sausages that probably you shouldn't be eating. And you should be working, go down a little bit the, the meat aisle and find something that's a little bit healthier in the meat department. So quality does matter, and these are, rules that are guidelines but they are not rigid right and so that's where the moderation comes in and in the vegetable department you need to be very cognizant of things that even though they are vegetables if they're highly sprayed with uh, fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides to make them look pretty come to the grocery store then that probably wouldn't be as good as vegetables that are not so heavily sprayed, they're more organic. They're going to look a little bit more damaged, they're going to look a little bit more beat up, but believe it or not, they're actually better for you. Well, then maybe somebody can kind of potentially consider getting some of their fruits and vegetables from the grocery store and maybe find a local farmer's market. Absolutely. Farmer's markets were, are great, but not all farmer's markets have organic foods. I mean, mm -hmm. and there's different grades of or, organic foods. I mean, there's some that to get an organic certification, you have to really have a rigid rigid rules on your farm and you had to have not used any kind of artificial fertilizer or pesticide herbicide for like three years you have to get certification that requires work and certification and then when you bring that produce to the market it's going to demand a higher price and people are going to be shopping for price and they may go to the farmer that did a little bit of organic you know he uses um, some natural fertilizer, but in order to make it look pretty, he may be spraying something on it. So not, not everything at the farmer's market may be healthy. Well, what, would you, what would you tell somebody who said that uh, making better uh, food choices, whether it's organic, grass-fed, non-GMO, will say when they um, argue about the price? So they're, they're basically telling you, you know, I would love to eat like that, but it's too expensive, basically. Correct. I mean, I hear that all the time. It's, it's expensive to eat healthy. Um, I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. You just, uh, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're making your palate make the decision. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're unable to make the healthy, less expensive food a bigger portion of your plate. Yeah. And you unfortunately are still focusing on the more expensive, mm -hmm. healthy part of your plate and wanting that to be large. And that's where the expense comes in. So, yes, you can treat yourself to a nice, high quality, grass-fed piece of steak, but maybe it needs to be a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. and, to, and then you should complement that with more vegetables, 
so that you don't go hungry because it's very difficult to have someone lose weight and have them go hungry at the same time. That's just not going to work. Yeah. Well, maybe kind of talking about the, you know, the moderation aspect, maybe getting someone to kind of evaluate how much money they're spending on a weekly basis on going out and eating at home and potentially if we can moderate going out to eat and you know, like what I like to tell a lot of my clients is um, if there's a food that comes to your mind that you want to eat, well, why don't we maybe make it and eat it at home, whether it's burgers or pizza. That's already just a great way to kind of moderate the ingredients that restaurants are using, maybe not quality or too much of, and a great way to kind of already start seeing um, whoever it is start making results or moving forward in the direction of their goals when it comes to weight loss, that kind of thing, because they're not you know, having a pizza with as much oil on it or something like that, or they can put a little bit better quality chicken on the pizza, or, you know, maybe they're doing boneless burgers instead of, you know, a big old massive burger from whatever. We love Fuddruckers, and those aren't around anymore, but. Right. Um, well, since we all get hungry, we're all gonna wanna eat at some point. Mm -hmm. So what has changed in the last 30, 40 years is the environment. And most weight loss experts will tell people that are trying to lose weight, they need to surround themselves with the better stuff so that when they go hungry, they reach for the better stuff instead of the easy, quick thing, going to the restaurant, ordering it, or driving through a fast food place. Well, I, what I like to tell people is, you know, if you're looking for something that might not necessarily be as healthy, it's more of the fun food, you gotta go out and get it don't have it in your house, and that's another great way to moderate it. So if you're wanting to go get ice cream, something like of that, go get it, have it, and then don't bring it back in your house. And then when it comes to um, you know moderation and accountability of it, maybe it's, it's time to start thinking about having a coach or a group. And I know you're big on um, kind of support groups when it comes to helping you move forward with your goals, and maybe you can kind of talk about that. Well, to get the best results, you want accountability. To get accountability, you want people to follow whatever the, the program is. Mm -hmm. And as an obstetrician, we provide prenatal care to a pregnant lady. And the best way to get the best obstetric outcome is to see her early on, see her frequently throughout the pregnancy, get her delivered safely, and then see, make sure she doesn't have any problems afterwards. So I think a weight loss program should be modeled after something like that that gives you frequent enough visits with a nutrition person, with an exercise person, with a medical person, so that they feel surrounded by people who care, who support them, and give them accountability. So we've kind of talked about when moderation can be very reasonable for somebody. I think in my opinion, you know, someone needs to lose maybe 30, 20, 15, 10 pounds being able to moderate the more fun foods with the what we know is a lot better and obviously incorporate exercise and you know they don't have to go take a longer time to get down to that desired body weight. Uh, I think it's a lot more reasonable for them to be moderate and then once they get down to that desired body weight, learn how to control that weight and find a diet that works for them. And maybe let's talk about when moderation might not actually be a thing. Maybe if, if it's somebody who needs to lose a lot of weight, they have a lot of issues going on, they're hypertensive, blood pressure, you know, they're pre-diabetic or they're diabetic, and we need to start really kind of sitting them down and looking in the eyes and tell them, hey, you need to make a change now. And it's a lot like alcohol anonymous, you know, where they need to basically just be taken completely away of, you know, what, you know, is their addictive attitude. Right. But once an alcoholic has recovered from alcoholism, you don't offer them a drink. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're going to fall right back to their problem. So the moderation message probably falls apart when people have more weight to lose. And, and let's not forget about the importance of, of stress reduction and sleep. Those are also important components. Mm -hmm. So when you have a, um, you're trying to lose weight, Make sure that you don't lose sight of those two aspects of it. But I think in general, the more overweight you are, the more rules you're going to have, the more, the more restrictive your, your, your diet plan is going to have to be in order to get the job done. Um, then once you lose all that weight, I'm not sure how you're going to blend some of that food back in that got you into trouble in the first place. Which is going to always be the question. So.
Yeah, so you know it might be a lot easier for someone who doesn't have to lose as much weight and psychologically didn't have this issue for so long. They just kind of, it is what it is. Their activity level decreased. You know, they ate a little bit more foods. Maybe their their work, uh, you know, increased, and they're pulling 10, 12 hours at you know at their job, and it just it is what it is. Or they had a kid and they found out they had to gain some weight compared to somebody who. This has been their entire life. They've brought up, been brought up through this, and they've been morbidly obese for a very long time. That is always going to be the kind of question, you know, once they get down to their desired body weight, can we learn and teach them how to moderate these foods, um, or should they just completely keep it out for the rest of their life? Um, you know, I'm always going to kind of be on that end of moderation, and you know, hopefully they can enjoy themselves. Um, but for some people, it might just uh, it work out where. You know what? Once that food's gone, they don't need it anymore. Um, they feel a lot better where they're at with their weight and and health. Right. Well, moderation is obviously an important ingredient to health and wellness, and what we eat and things that we do. Make sure you get enough sleep and stress reduction. It's all part of the plan. So I, I guess kind of the conversation we're having is just to be aware, to understand that. You need to find what works for you, whether it's completely cutting it out or you learn moderation. At least what we know and what we want to teach people is to learn how to have the better foods, eat more quality, get lots of fruits and vegetables in, learn how to moderate so that you can get down to your body weight and sustain it, and then depending on your goals, incorporate other stuff, whether it's more protein, more carbohydrates, but the base of your diet should always be plant-based, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, just to make sure that we're focusing on our health first, right? right? right. Um, so maybe as we leave uh, and we finish up this podcast, maybe give us maybe one or two tips that you would use or that you use for your life and that someone can take away today and start moving forward in the direction of moderation. Yeah. Well, for myself, I have a rule where there's some things that I just can't say completely goodbye to pizza or lasagna or, I mean there's some cuisines that that I certainly enjoy and in order to keep my nutrition in moderation so I don't overeat and eat too much of the bad stuff um, I try to eat very healthy mostly whole food plant based Monday through Friday and then a little little starting Friday night over the weekend usually by Sunday night the meal the Sunday night meal ends up being healthy again and it, it works for you and it works for me able to maintain your weight and uh, it might work for somebody for me I just kind of have checks and balances I know when my my more fun foods are it, it is what it is I'm, I'm a very open person when it comes to nutrition um, I deprived myself for a very long time you know thinking what I knew what was nutrition and eating like what a bodybuilder would typically eat usually chicken and, and veggies and rice and um, I didn't know moderation, I completely just canceled stuff out. And now I really try to teach myself moderation so that I don't go back to that. So if I have a craving, I just learn how to have a small portion of it and move on. And then about every four to six weeks, I will, um, what I like to call, go ham. Uh, but basically what I'm meaning is, I eat a little bit more, I eat a little bit past satisfied. Um, I don't feel great, but I move on from it and I get it out of my system and it works for me. I'm able to maintain my weight um, you know, incorporating my exercise routine, this found what works for me. So, so I guess we could conclude with, if nature made it, you should be aware of some of the pitfalls of that, but you should be eating most of that. And if man made it, also be aware of some of the pitfalls and eat those things in moderation. So I, yeah, the biggest thing is find what, mo what moderation means for you and uh, just be aware, just be open-minded just to understand and kind of do your own research and, and find what works for you and just try to do your best you can when it comes to making the best choice you can and putting the, the best foods inside your body. It's going to lead to just a better, healthier uh, life. Sounds great. All right, guys. Appreciate you for listening. Uh, you can check us out at Take Control Radio on social media, so Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can check out our gym, Forge RX. Same thing, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to reach out to us about the podcast, you can email us at takecontrolradio at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. And today's topic is 
fitness, functional fitness. I know we've been talking a lot about diets and moderation and food, and we're going to change the topic around a little bit because 4GRX is fitness, nutrition, and wellness.